All right, so for our final section, we're going to kind of close with a devotional thought. Um, at Trinity, where I'm um, on staff, we're kind of following the lectionary, and so one of the texts for this Sunday um, is kind of inspiring this thought. And as I was preparing for this, the question comes to mind, kind of a question for you guys to keep in mind as we discuss, is does God change? Can God's will, his plan, um, can that change? Uh, It reminds me of a story, that question reminds me of a story I read once in a missionary book where a missionary was talking about her call, um, why she was where she was, why she was doing what she was doing. And it started off with the statement that she felt like she was God's second choice, that someone else must have said no to God for her then to be called to be a missionary. And I can't really remember her name or any other details of the story, and I couldn't find the story again in preparing for this, but I think there was a in, really interesting thought that she was leading off with is, um, you know, does God have a plan B? Uh, can we say that and still be orthodox? A big part of our faith, really a big part of who God is, is that God is unchangeable, right? God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This is a part that that helps comforts us. It gives us rest because we know that God is always faithful, that he gives unfailing love. And so we think then that the question to the answer posed to us is pretty simple. But then we read this text in Jonah, and it kind of inspires maybe a more difficult answer. We find our story, we're not going to read um, the whole text or story of Jonah, and I encourage you to do that. It's only four chapters. It's a real short book. But just looking at Jonah chapter 3. Starting with the first verse, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, get up, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah got up and he sent out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and every one, great and small, put on sackcloth. Jump down to verse 10, and it says, When God saw what they had done, how they had turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. So our text is very fascinating. God changed God's mind. Now, maybe this may not seem like a big deal to you. Maybe you've not thought about it, or you have, and you've kind of come to your conclusion. And especially when we hear the story, God's changing his mind towards mercy. So that that seems like a really positive. But this is something that actually the church has struggled with, this idea of if God can change. Um, The church has struggled with this pretty much since the beginning of its inception, how do we rightfully talk about God, orthodoxy? How does this inform our practices, our liturgies? For many others, in many other religions, gods were these all-powerful, unmoved movers. And yet the story of the God of the Hebrews, the story of the God of Christians, stands in uh, utter contrast of this. Because we see a God who moves and journeys with his people. Uh, He doesn't stay on a mountaintop. Instead, he, he actually is moved with the people in an Ark of the Covenant. He journeys with the people. He doesn't stay in Egypt or in the wilderness, in the desert, or on Mount Sinai, but instead travels with them. Even his resting place in the temple in Jerusalem, even when that is destroyed, this God still moves with his people. Later on, we hear the story of God being made flesh, putting on flesh, and walking again amongst God's creation. This God makes himself so vulnerable that he even allows creation to kill him. So what does this have to do with our question, does God change? Now, we can say with utter surety that God's character does not change. God's love, mercy, peace, strength, um, all that is constant. His faithfulness is always faithful. We can say it, it seems obvious, but it's something we have to be reminded of. And yet God allows God's self to be affected by humanity. God cries and mourns with us when we go through difficult time. God rejoices and is happy with us when we have good times. He forgives when we are repentant. He provides strength when we are tired and struggling. Our God is involved in the world, acting and reacting. He is shaping and molding. God wants to be in a relationship with each and every person, wanting to journey with them. 
there's no grand script, no great story already written out that just needs to be played out by, by mindless characters. It is an adventure that needs to be taken. Again, God's ultimate will, his ultimate character won't change. But God allows for us to make a choice. And our choices will affect not only ourselves, but other people. And then ultimately, it will affect God. And like I said, it's an adventure to be taken for us called to participate in what God is doing in the world. God will always be faithful to redeem. God will always be faithful to transform. But we have a part to play in that. And for some of us, that may be encouraging. For us, some of us, that may be daunting because we can't just sit back and participate mindlessly, but we get to actually have a choice and to participate. So I hope this little short devotional thought will get you thinking and hopefully will call you into that relationship with God that you will participate fully and completely with God and God's redemptive and loving acts in the world. All right. Well, um, that was a really good devotional. Um, I, I really like that. The story of Jonah is really fascinating. Um, it does a, a lot of really, really cool stuff. Um, it's so unexpected than what when one would oftentimes expect from the Old Testament stories. And even Jonah finds himself the unexpected calling to leave basically what is Israel to go to a land that is not Israel, to take the kingdom of God elsewhere. It's a fantastic story. Well, if you enjoyed our program, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can help us out a lot by simply subscribing to our, our YouTube channel. That will help us out tremendously. Um, also, if you would like to leave comments, if you would like to talk with any of us about anything, you, please feel free to, to send us things in the comment section, um, and we will get back to you to the best of our ability. Again, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, um, a lot of different places, also on Tumblr and, and Twitter. Um, and on that, have a blessed day.